I remember the first table reading, or one of the first two table readings we had, and we were all, well, I had to be the first one, we were all just meeting, and we sat um, at this long table in a conference room and, and had a, a read-through. Even before we started, um, some, and I don't want to, I don't know if I can call them antics, maybe it's, it's nervous energy, maybe it's just uh, my absolute desire or need to uh, make sure that people have a good time, that uh, there's an understanding that things shouldn't be taken so seriously. I certainly don't take myself that seriously, too. Fascinating behind the scenes the stuff. <laughs> there's been a rapport that has uh, developed over the years, and I think an understanding, or if nothing else, an acceptance, hopefully, uh, that old Rick has got uh, a few loose cables and bolts and nuts and stuff. My breasts are sticking together. Ah! There are times that I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth, which kind of leads me to believe that I really don't know what's going on in my head. My sense of humor tends to be irreverent, sarcastic, uh, at times cynical. But the character and I guess my the general approach uh, had to had to have some humor in it. There had to be some levity to it. It's worked out. People uh, were pretty happy with what they saw in the uh, in the pilot of the show, and I've just been playing on that ever since. Well, my fellow cast members, um, they've had to endure um, not just my eccentricities, but uh, I guess my my appreciation for the absurd. Um, the incongruous, the, <laughs> the weird, I guess. I don't know, individually, uh, Amanda is, is funny in, own, in her own right. She's uh, an extremely talented, uh, I think, comedian. She's got a, a keen wit. She's uh, very perceptive. I mean, she, she kind of gets it. I mean, she's uh, uh, a very funny woman. Um, Chris Judge is uh, big. He's, uh, aside from physically, he also has one of the biggest hearts, and uh, his laughter is absolutely infectious or obnoxious, depending on you know, where you might be. Chris has grown to appreciate, I think, uh, my sense of the absurd. So I, I, I adore him, as, especially his heart. He's a really wonderful man. Uh, Michael Shanks. Oh, jeez! Camera guy again. Michael is there uh, to race, and it's it's really fun to have someone with that kind of energy and awareness of rhythms and uh, the abilities to, for timing, and uh, that can that can click. And uh, and Michael's also not afraid to to try it and to try virtually anything or work things out. Um, all in all, I think uh, uh, it's important that uh, you know the time that is spent together for me. It's important that there is uh, there is levity and humor and laughter. Just that we were, we were there. there. Oh, no! <laughs> 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 My interests vary. Um, I mean, I have a variety of interests, but my greatest interest is, uh, is in the outdoors and um, things of nature. I get involved in uh, a couple of projects uh, in the last not, uh, five years or so, uh, one of which was uh, uh, Earth River Expeditions. Eric Hertz is the uh, proprietor of the, the company, and he asked me to be a part of a, a renegade uh, documentary uh, film group that would uh, essentially document uh, about eight of the great rivers of the world. The one that I think right that, that looms right now as the as the most profound experience has been the, the Upper Yangtze the trek uh, to China and into Tibet. 9,000 miles, get on the Yangtze River and I forget Chapster. The upper part of it is rarely, in fact, we're the first group to uh, document uh, as best we could the river itself, the, the physicality of it, uh, but also visit as many of the uh, 
monasteries, the Tibetan Buddhist monasteries along the way, and asked some pointed questions about uh, the connection that the river has had uh, with, or has uh, with uh, uh, Buddhism. It was one of, it, one of those experiences that was um, that I've described as being a consciousness altering experience, uh, because I still to this day don't have a really clear uh, understanding of the of the tenets of Tibetan Buddhism. But my experience in just meeting the people, uh, the monks, uh, you know, I speak in in terms of it being such a, a kind of a, almost a revelation to me. And part of that has allowed me to look at the flip side of it, because in meeting these people, the, there is that realization that you know we are, for the most part, the first um, white human beings these these folks have ever seen. Uh, no one speaks speaks English, or very few uh, speak English, and where we were. So our mode of communication became through the eyes initially. We all seem to be staring at one another. <laughs> and then through uh, physicalization of some kind and uh, with tone of voice or with nods of understanding or, of, or of, you know, nods of misunderstanding. Uh, and I have to say that the thing that made it so comfortable uh, were the Tibetan people, the people themselves, who in general are the warmest, most beautiful, physical human beings I've ever seen. We, we got down to absolute basics. The basics of, of uh, you know, a handshake, embrace. Uh, these are things that, uh, ways of, of communication that, uh, you know, that we relied on. <laughs> Perfect. I'm sitting here doing three, three different things. Chatting with a camera, driving down Pacific Coast Highway, and eating a Subway sandwich and also trying to explain the intricacies of the Challengers Club. And when I entered into its uh, energy, it was uh, literally a parking lot and essentially a, a gymnasium. Before all this was a playground. Yeah. And then this was the main entrance right here. And there's, yeah. This is the old... Uh, this is the old side. We used to have everything in here. Yeah. Uh, there was a chain link fence that got erected around it. I think that was one of the first things that needed to be put in place because it's in a part of town that was frequented by crack dealers and gang members. I mean, it was really a bit of the cliche uh, uh, inner city type environment. And Lou Danzler took it upon himself to start raising funds and sort of taking the, the, the reins in his hands and essentially developed the, the club itself, Challengers Boys and Girls Club. Over the years, it's developed all through donations. He's uh, gathered uh, some of the land, acquired some of the land around there and done further development of, for buildings and uh, facilities. It allows inner city kids who attend to learn all aspects of well, commerce, uh, what it takes to run a kitchen, what it takes to cook, you know, something as simple as that. Computers have been donated over the years, uh, so there's a computer lab. Um, I think Lou's intention was to, to create uh, a protected area in the inner city where these kids could be kids, because it really was not a safe neighborhood. He wanted the kids to be able to relax and be free to, to express themselves as kids and to have a recreational environment. Uh, for what little publicity I seek, I do always try to bring uh, Lou's name and challengers to light. Um, and the bottom line to it all is it's just been an absolute honor to know this man. I think 
Lou's got some things in the some things to show off today as part of the 35th anniversary celebration. That's where we're going. I've had um, fans who have been loyal to, to my career um, my entire life. I mean, I just, I, I don't quite understand the attraction. Um, and that's not meant to be falsely self-deprecating in any way. I, I, I truly, because I know that I'm, I'm, I've been lucky and extremely fortunate, the fact is I, Barry. I do know pragmatically that I've, I've made the most of, out of a limited amount of talent. I've done as, as much as I can. If for some reason people have been attracted to it or, or willing to put up with it or tolerate it or be supportive. And uh, the experience in general has been, uh, just as a blanket statement, has been quite spectacular. Hi, Jack! Thanks for coming! I was told you said there was six jobs Where'd you learn to count? Awesome! Perfect! And that's a day in the life. But I would really be remiss uh, if yeah, I didn't you know, grab the opportunity to, to actually say the words thank you. From the bottom of my pancreas for all your uh, support. Thanks for watching Beyond the Gate with me.